All right guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for clicking on this week's video. This is my NS-130 inflatable skiff. I actually showed you this boat last week. If you didn't catch that video, be sure to go check it out. I kind of did a full walk around and went over what this boat actually is. I was originally gonna keep this boat as a boat in a bag style setup so we could pack it up real small. And I decided after we put it together last week that I wanna build a legit boat out of this. We're gonna put a bow mount trolling motor, electronics, probably a live scope setup. I wanna push this inflatable boat to the max to see how far we could actually trick out an inflatable boat that weighs like 60 pounds. So I wanna take it to the water before I start doing any kind of rigging to see how stable this boat actually is. Before I can take it to the water, I have to build a trailer for this thing. And I've been on Facebook Marketplace for the last three or four days trying my best to find the perfect trailer for this thing. I wanted something lightweight, something small. And it seems like now that kayak fishing has become such a big deal, everybody wants an arm and a leg for these trailers. I'm talking boat trailers that are 50 years old with flat tires, no fenders, no lights. People are asking four or $500 for, and then you gotta put all that money into it. So. I think I've got an idea where I can kind of reuse something I have without destroying it. And I'm gonna do some measurements today. We're gonna go to the back of my property, pick up my double kayak trailer, bring it up here. I think I've figured out a way in my head that we can put a platform on it to haul this skiff without messing it up so we can't haul our two kayaks at the same time, I think. We're gonna do some measurement here in just a minute, hop on the golf cart, go down to the back of the property, pull the old trailer up here and See if we can make this work. I really hope so because I don't want to be a thousand bucks into a trailer for an inflatable boat. I just, I can't make myself do that. Hopefully we can use some of the stuff I've got here around the house to make a trailer that's multi-purpose. We'll take a tape measure with me down there. We're probably gonna pull the trailer up here anyway, no matter what, because it's supposed to rain tomorrow and the next day. Today's Wednesday, it's supposed to rain Thursday and Friday. So maybe we can go ahead and get the trailer in the shop. That way it don't get soaked and we can build it out. And this weekend, when it dries up, we can go put that skiff on the water for the first time. I put a ball hitch on the back of this golf cart so that I can use it to pull these trailers around the yard. That lithium battery makes this thing really dependable. This is a 1990 golf cart. It's awesome. It's actually supposed to start getting cold again this week. So it might be good that we're working inside for the next few days. Now y'all don't make fun of me over my mess I got back here. <laughs> I'm one of those what you call hoarders. I keep just about everything because I'm always building something and I can't throw anything away. So I got a lean to out on the back of my property, just full of junk. <laughs> but the trailer's back here beside it. There she is. I have not been down here and messed with this thing in months. It's covered in pine straw and leaves, but it still should be good. If you don't recognize this trailer and you're interested in it, I actually built this trailer here on the channel. It used to be a double jet ski trailer that we picked up pretty cheap offline. I brought it home, we converted it and built it out into a double kayak trailer. It's the best double kayak trailer I've seen so far, really cool. So maybe we can convert this thing today into a skiff and a double kayak trailer. So y'all don't make fun of me. This is my junk pile, like I was saying, I got a shed back here that's falling apart. I keep all my spare tires. I got tractor implements, my tractor, my lawnmower. This tree right here decided to drop a big old limb about two weeks ago. This pile of junk here used to be a lean-to on the other side of that. That tree limb took it all out and I've been back here having to clean it up. I, I got a mess to haul off soon. But anyway, here is my double kayak trailer. If you've been with the channel for a long time, y'all probably watched me build this thing. It's a little dirty. It's just been stuck back here in the backyard. I hadn't used it in a while, but I'm thinking that we can use this trailer and like I said earlier, turn it into a multi-purpose trailer. And I've even got another idea that I think might work. So the plan is to put a post up here, a post here off of our carpeted walkboard and get the post high enough and then put a carpeted platform to hold the skiff in the center of this trailer. And if we can do that, whenever we're ready to just haul kayaks and not the skiff, it still should haul the kayaks 
and that platform that we build in the middle, we might be able to put our rod box, our top water rod box on it. I think if we build this right, we can make it work. In the middle, in between the tunes, we've got right around 20 inches. So I think if we can build a about a 19 inch wide platform to leave a little bit of space on the car, you know, the carpet to wrap and a little bit of room so it's not a tight fit. I believe if we build that just high enough to get the pontoons above these runners that we got built here for the kayaks, that, that boat might be able to slide on and off right in the middle. And I was just worried that we didn't have enough room here, but we've got well over 20 inches in between these two. Yeah, that's 37 inches, we're, we're good there. And all we're gonna have to do is build some brackets up high enough to clear that with the tunes, put us some wood. I've got a, you can see I collect everything back here. So I got plenty of wood, I got plenty of lumber, I've got some steel scrap that we can weld up some square tumid brackets. Get it, I, th I think I've still got boat carpet. We may be able to do this without spending any money and that is a good goal. And we'll get a chance to clean up our old trailer. I've been neglecting it just a little bit because I've got a million projects going on. Let's hook it up to the golf cart and bring it up to the shop. got the trailer in tow. There's one thing I just remembered about this kayak trailer is how wide this thing actually is. It barely fits in the garage door. It does fit, but I remember it, it barely fit. It is a really, really wide trailer. Whoa, I'm popping wheelies on this golf cart. I, I put a lithium battery in this cart what, last year, year before last? I think I did a video when I built this cart. And man, this thing is bad to the bone. I haven't charged the battery in probably six months and I think it's got like 80% charge still. I do love this weather. It feels great out here. I think it's like 60 degrees outside today. Fall is my favorite time of year. <laughs> Man, that's a tight fit, but it fits. All right, it's in the shop. I think we brought a hitchhiker with us. We've just seen this really dark lizard. I think he hitchhiked on the trailer up here. <laughs> Sorry, brother. I might have to take you back down there. You don't know where you're at. You're in a different world. Just don't stay in the shop, go out. Go out, go out, go out. Go out. Don't go in the shop, there you go, outside. There you go. Enough with the lizard. Let's see if I can make this guy fit on this guy. I've got a plan in my head. Let me show you guys what I'm thinking. So I think the first thing that I'm gonna do, instead of just trying to measure all this out, since the boat weighs nothing, I can go ahead and pull my motor off, pull the battery out, and pick it up and just set it on there, see about how far we would want it to sit back, and just make sure that this is gonna work before we do all kind of measurements and stuff. This motor is so cool, and it weighs nothing. But now, I mean, <laughs> I should be able to just throw it up there, right? <laughs> yeah, this thing don't weigh anything. Set it like that. It's a lot bigger than it looks once you get it on this trailer. And I'm not gonna want it that far forward. We'll probably have to relocate that spare tire. Yeah, I need it way more, way further back than this. Shh. 
I'm thinking somewhere right in there. I might have it pulled back just a little bit too far. I may need to pull it maybe just even with where I got my bunks off right there, but I know my kayaks, they stuck off pretty far. And then up here, it's just right in there. And I'm thinking, let me show you back here. I don't like how the tunes are touching anything. I'd rather have the tunes basically just dangling above the trailer. So if we can get our supports, like I mentioned in here, this is pretty solid and just get us a board carpeted, you know, so nothing tears, nothing sharp on it and just have it so this slides on there and just sits flush with it. It's, it's perfectly flat down here and smooth, so I think it'll work. A nice carpeted area, we'll just build it wide enough so it supports it really good and have it so these tunes don't touch at all. Just go high enough with these posts so that they sit right above there. And then I'm thinking we can use our straps that I got here on the side for the kayaks to kind of just hook it. Maybe I can put some straps that go across the tunes here and just have it hooked right there. We won't have to cinch it down too tight and we might even be able to just haul it like this with the motor because we could just leave the motor hanging back here. It's not gonna hang too low and we should be able to just back this right into the lake. I think the main measurement that I'm gonna need is how tall these need to be so that it's not too tall. I mean, I don't want the, the boat way up here, which I could, you know, if I had this really tall, I could build this so it sit above the kayaks, but then it wouldn't really be launchable and I wanna keep this so where it's launchable. So we'll just do it like this for now. Maybe in the future, if I wanna build this out to make it to where we can haul two kayaks and the skiff above them, I can make another bracket that's even taller or even make this one telescopic so it goes up higher. But for now, we're just gonna focus on trying to get this boat to the water so we can actually use it. <laughs> so let's see, what kind of measurements do I need here? Let's sit down here. So with it touching the, the poles here, I've got about 10 and a half inches to the bottom, to the top, from the top of my board to the bottom of the boat. So if we pick up on it, get it just above there. All right, I think 11 inches will do it. So we'll weld us up some brackets really quick, set the boat to the side. I'm gonna make sure I get it as far away from my welder as possible. And uh, that way we don't throw no sparks at it. Build the brackets and then just go from there, but 11 inches, I don't want it too high. Like I said, we'll keep it as low as possible, but at least we can go ahead and get these brackets mounted up, get some wood up there, and it should go pretty easy after that. I have to move everything around in my garage to work. I basically had to build everything I got on wheels just so that I got room to be able to do different projects. But this is what I'm thinking. We'll cut one of these down to where we get about 11 inches. I got, I got some plates. I think that's like a quarter inch thick plate. It's way overkill for what we need. But I'm thinking we can weld us a, a post to the plate somewhere back here, you know, close to the back, have it where we bolt it through the board, put one here and one up here, kind of right above where our supports are here on the trailer. And if we got them like that, see one here, somewhere right in there. And then we can run a two by four across one side of this board and one across the other side, cut us a 19 inch wide by however, probably maybe 10 feet long. I'll do some measurement and see of my three quarter inch plywood, have it laying across here is almost like a shelf. Carpet it like we have this one carpeted, paint all this to match. I think it'll look good when we get done. And it should haul the skiff. And I'm also thinking that with that platform up here, when we want to run the kayaks, if it's, uh, hopefully it's high enough and clears the kayaks pretty good, but have it to where we can put our rod box, our top water rod box, right on top of it here in between the kayaks. I think that would be pretty cool. I was actually wrong about that plate that we're using, this half inch thick plate. And I, I just dug around, I don't have anything thinner, so we're just gonna go with it. I've got enough to do the job. I'm gonna use a plate on top of the piece of tubing and a plate on the bottom. So that's gonna take a full inch off of our 11. So I'm just gonna cut these down 10 inches and then we'll kind of test them up. Holy cow, there's stuff all over those. And then we'll, we'll test fit them and then we'll weld them up. 
I'm gonna be using this Bauer grinder. It throws so many sparks. I would love to have an Evolution chop saw. Those things are so much nicer. They don't throw spark. They just cost a lot more than this one. This is a Harbor Freight Special. It leaves a lot of slag on there too, which I mean, it's just fine, but that evolution saw is way better. Now, there's one, one more. All right, I've got my welding cart as far away from the boat as possible. I'm gonna try to tuck over here next to my other project, my truck frame, which I just realized y'all been getting a, a lot of sneak peeks if you've been following my Chevy K10 build, because I haven't released a video of it looking like this yet. So if you've been paying attention, you see what the frame looks like already. We've got a lot of, pro I've got a lot of progress done to that so far. I just, I just cleaned this one up, and it's not even one of the ones that we're going to use. <laughs> this is my, that's my two 10 inches. This is what's left over. Well, I guess it's clean for whatever project I end up using it on next. Here's our plates. I'm thinking they're just gonna sit. I get a, I'll eyeball a good center right here. And then we'll just go up. We'll put another plate on the top. And instead of running two by fours down, we, we could probably just bolt our plywood right to the top of this. I don't think that'll be too far of a, a run to do that. And if it is, we could always make another one of these for the middle if we needed to. Let's just give that a go. Let me clean these up a little. I'm not doing nothing crazy precise. I'm basically just eyeballed it. I threw a ruler up there a little bit just to see. It's not bad. I ain't welded in a few months. It's not a bad bead. I'm gonna do the other side so it don't pull over. It shouldn't though, it's pretty thick stuff. That's basically what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do another one on the top. I ain't gonna sit and make y'all watch me weld every bit of this, but then we'll spray some black paint on them, get them set up there. And hopefully that's 11 inches. Let me check it, <laughs> make sure I measured right. Yeah, we're right at 11 inches, so. But it's gonna actually be a little bit taller because once we lay that three quarter inch plywood up there, we're gonna have a little bit taller on there, but it should be all right. Let me flip it over, knock out this weld real quick, and I'll catch back up with y'all. So what do y'all think? Y'all think 
<laughs> these I beams can hold up that inflatable skiff that weighs 60 pounds. <laughs> I'm gonna let these cool off, wire brush them down, we'll throw some paint on them and, and then mock them up on the trailer because they're still hot. All right, good morning, guys. It is the next day. I sprayed these down really good last night with paint before I went to bed. And it looks like they all cleaned up really nice. I just went with flat black to match the trailer. I'm gonna grab them. We're gonna mock them up this morning. It's been raining all night long. I've gotta make a trip back down to the shed today to get some lumber. I think all I'm gonna end up using is three quarter inch plywood. We're just gonna cut an 18 inch wide strip maybe 10 foot long, we'll do some measuring before I go get it, cut it, round over the edges, carpet it, and bolt it up there. And then we should be able to throw the boat on there this morning, hopefully first thing. I am glad I went ahead and pulled the trailer in because like I said, it rained all night last night. It's probably still raining out there right now, but we can go down there and get the wood, bring it up here and try to get this thing mocked up really quick, do some test fitting with the boat, and hopefully take it out this weekend. It's supposed to dry up by tomorrow and I think be nice and sunny this weekend. I'll show you up close how these turned out really quick. I should have welded them a little bit straighter. This one's got more of a lean to it. It definitely, I shouldn't have welded one side at a time like you've seen me do. I should have did all four corners and, and then welded it right because it did pull that metal over. It'll be fine, I mean, for what we're doing. Remember guys, we're building all of this out of just scrap stuff that I got, but we should be able to bolt one back here. Let's see. I'm thinking right there. The other one is gonna go right up in here somewhere. We'll be able to put a platform right across. Just basically, we're building a shelf right there. So now let's go down to the land. Let's probably gonna have to take the truck back there because I'm definitely not gonna carry that wood all the way up here. It's hopefully the rain stopped. Oh yeah, it ain't raining right now. Let's take the Nissan back there, grab some wood and come up here before it does start raining again. We should have enough down here to make this work. This one might even be big enough. We could double it up if we need to. If we need to make it extra thick, we could do two strips stack them on top of each other because we are going to be going over a long span with uh, not really a whole lot of weight on it though. You know, that boat's not going to weigh much. Even once we get it rigged out, it's not going to be that heavy of a boat. So we should be fine. I went ahead and grabbed some of my scrap carpet too. This is the thin carpet that you can get at like Lowe's. This, is, this ain't really my bass boat carpet from BassBoatSeats.com. This is the stuff that I like to use inside rod lockers and hatches because it's easy to kind of manipulate and get it to, to flex and stick really well. And I've got a piece left that may work. It may just be wide enough for us to cover what we need. If not, I do have some bass boat carpet downstairs that we can drag up and, and go from there, but hopefully that'll be good enough for us today. I probably don't need to route the edges off, but I think we need to make this as smooth as a transition as possible for this boat. I'm so scared I'm gonna end up putting a hole in it. I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding to it, get it smoothed up. It's not a good day to have a hole in your britches because all that sawdust just went in my boot. That's good. I'll clean this mess up and then we'll get back to the trailer. Metal work is so much cleaner than woodwork. 
Let's see if this carpet's gonna fit. Man, I hope it does. I don't think we're gonna have enough though. Yeah, so close. <laughs> I want to be able to wrap it over the sides too, though. Golly, that's so close. All right, let me go get the other carpet. This ain't gonna work. Dang it, I wanted it to work. I'm glad I ended up having to go get my other boat carpet. This is some scrap I had left over from one of my boat restorations. I can't remember. I've still got my tan down there too from my nitro restoration, but look over here. When I unrolled it, it looks like we had a squirrel or something already trying to build a nest in here. So I can clean this up. I try to keep all this boat carpet for scrap just in case you ever need it. You gotta replace something on your boat. It, you get a tear or something, or even boat runners. Uh, these work great for you know, runners for your bass boat or even your kayak runners. We didn't put carpet on this one. We used that marine mat on the top, which works good if it's wet, but when it's dry, it's really hard to slide the kayaks back and forth but this carpet works great for that so i'm just going to measure me a part out here cut it but i'm not going to carpet the wood until we get it bolted on because i want to be able to countersink the bolts in the wood and have a smooth i don't want the bolts you know sticking on top of the carpet so it'll snag the boat or anything so let me cut this out and we'll move over to the trailer. I'm just gonna set the carpet to the side for now. I am kind of glad that we ended up having to go down there and get this carpet. This is a 20 ounce. It's what I put in the uh, camping trailer last year. If you guys remember that trailer we built that uh, had the rooftop tent over it, that utility trailer. This is the carpet left over from this. I think it's a 20, it might even be a 24 ounce carpet. So it's gonna be really thick and give a really good pad on top of this wood. Oh, let me pull these out of the paint booth. And for now, we're just gonna set them on this board and mock everything up before we start drilling holes. I'm thinking I'd like to go right in there and then right there. And now, I don't guess it matters which end of this. Basically, we're building a big shelf. And I'm really hoping that this is not gonna be so wide that it's gonna be in the way. I'm gonna get it center, but I'm hoping the kayak still fit beside it. It ain't looking good because it, we did go a little bit wider than I originally thought we were gonna do, but I also wanna be able to haul this skiff without being worried that we're gonna pop it or damage it in any way. We'll actually be going through a metal plate on the bottom of this too. If we center this up. I'm just eyeballing this, y'all. This ain't nothing precise. This is also easily removable. So it should be just these four bolts. And if we end up, you know, having to take this off to be able to run our two kayaks later on, then that's what we'll do. But I'm hoping not. I'm hoping we'll be able to keep it on here and get some multi-purpose use out of it. Got it all evened up. Six inches off each side is perfect where it's at. I didn't want it sticking too far off the back. It does got more overhang at the front, but I think it'll be okay. I wanna be able to slide the boat up as far as possible on this trailer and still have the potential of running the NT300 motor on it so I don't have to put the motor on it at the lake. We can just pull up, unstrap it, and back it in the water.
hopefully those marked. I couldn't see what I was doing. Yeah. try to do is I got one of these little plunge bits. I got a size that's about the size of the washer I'm going to be using. I'll try to just countersink them just a little bit right here. Just putting a washer and a nut on the bottom of these. I'm going to tighten them down. Then we do the carpet. There it is, one portable park bench. <laughs> we could literally use this if we brought the inflatable camping with us, we could use this to sit and eat by the lake. Multi-purpose. There's gonna be so many uses for this shelf. This is also the same carpet that's on the bunk up under this, our little walk board there. So now it's gonna match too. I think, we glue it down a little bit, staple it on up under there. That's gonna be a nice, nice place to be able to pull that boat on and off. I've actually got a ton of boat carpet glue left over in the cabinet over there. This is the stuff from BassBoatSeats.com that I use. Their stuff is not for like putting on top of fiberglass, it's mainly for like wooden decks and stuff. On, on boats, like pontoon boats and stuff like that. So it'll work perfect for this. And this is boat carpet, so all of this is exactly what it's meant to be used for. I'm just gonna roll it back a little bit and do half of this at a time. If I can get it to roll back, Jesus. I just got a roller. I'm not, I'm just gonna put it on with a roller <laughs> and try not to make a huge mess. This stuff goes on a lot better with a roller. You just gotta put it on kind of thick. Once you get a thin coat on it, you can come back over it and just barely touch the roller with a heavy roller once you get a good bit on there. And it'll pile up pretty evenly, just like that. You don't have to have a trowel and all that stuff with this glue. Now you gotta try to not get it on the carpet you want showing, just the back of the carpet. And I really didn't do any measurement, measuring on this. Go back to there.
No, don't drip. This stuff goes on pretty fast. You just mainly want to make sure that it's kind of tacked up. And it tacks up quick, especially if you do like a thin coat. When you're doing, if you're using this to do a boat, which this is what it's meant for as a boat, you put that thin coat on, and then within just a few seconds, it'll start tacking up, and then you can come back over it and really build it up and get a nice thick base on it. This stuff is designed for wood, though, not anything else. It can't go over metal, fiberglass, anything like that, because it, it's got to evaporate through the wood. It can't evaporate, the, the water that's in this glue can't evaporate through anything else. It's a carpet roller. If you do a lot of bass boats, like if you're gonna carpet a lot of bass boats, or even just one, it's good to have one of these cheap rollers. All right, now I'm just gonna start pulling and stapling and sweating. I am broke out into a sweat out here. It's supposed to be winter time. But now all I'm gonna do is, I got the glue nice and rolled down on the top. The carpet should hold really good. I'm just gonna start in the center and I got a, an electric stapler, old Harbor Freight Special here. And I'm gonna do it just like I would do the hatches of a boat. Uh, wooden ones anyway that you would fold over and staple up Just like that. I'm just gonna work my way around and cut the corners carpet is installed I got everything stapled up figured I'd show you guys before we slid the boat on here I could probably go with some more staples, but I got it stapled down pretty good Plus the glue on the top here is gonna hold it good nice and thick I do think this was the 24 ounce carpet that I ordered so it's gonna have a lot of good padding and the boat should slide on and off of here really good. And like I mentioned, when we need to take it off, four bolts would just take it off and if we need to. I'm kind of hoping, I know it'll be tight, but the Hobie's set up pretty high. I'm hoping we can just leave this on here and run the kayak. See, there's, there's a good bit of room, but I know that Hobie's really wide, so it may be just too close. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. There it is. It's a lot higher up than I thought, but is the pontoons touching? Oh no, they're nowhere near touching. It actually fits perfect on there. Here's a view from the back. Here's the actual carpet and it ends right there. There's still a good, it's hard to tell on the camera. There's a good inch on both sides of the board and we can slide it all the way up and I think we will be able to haul the motor on there. We'll put it on there in just a minute and see. It's not touching the bunks. It's actually about four inches above it but it's also not touching our spare tire in the front either. Let's see if we can see it from the front. Oh yeah, it holds it perfectly. And the board is just long enough to, for the full boat to sit the weight on top of it. So I think we'll be safe with running our trolling motor up here. It's not gonna be too much weight up there. This is gonna be nice. So now that I can get this thing to the water, I actually need to go get it registered so I can legally put it on the water. So tomorrow I'm gonna head up to the courthouse, get my registration numbers, register this inflatable boat. Didn't think I'd ever do that 
but I'm gonna get a registration for it so I can put some numbers on it. I'm also gonna pick up a crate while I'm out tomorrow so that we can put the battery in the crate. Go ahead and try to, I'm not gonna fully rig it out before we take it out, but I am gonna get a few things on it, throw some fishing rods in here, and that is gonna be for the next video though. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. We're not gonna be able to put it on the water because I don't have time to go get this boat registered today, but the trailer turned out great. I think it's gonna work really well. We can even use my ratchet straps that are usually for the kayaks on this to hold it down and we don't really have to add anything else and it should launch and load just fine. We'll figure that out once we get out there. But I really appreciate you guys watching this. Let me know what you think about this trailer. If you would have done something different, let me know. I do wish the trailer was a little bit more narrow, a little bit more compact, but a free trailer. I mean, we didn't have to go out and buy one. I didn't have to go negotiate with somebody on Facebook Marketplace to get an old, you know, 50 year old trailer that ain't really worth what they're asking. So it worked out good. We're going to go stick it in the water this week. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you want to see this boat on the water, if you want to watch me rig this boat out, build it out with live scope, all kind of cool stuff, y'all stay tuned. I upload every Monday at 6 p.m. and I'll catch you guys next week. Peace.